awesome thing for us to start with. And I want us the to word says, that the spirit of heaviness. That we're surrounded by him. It may look but like you're surrounded, praise. but we're surrounded by him, are we not? So Father, That's how we fought our battles. Right and we want to be surrounded by your presence and your hand upon us. This is how I fight my battles. Come on. This is how I fight my battles. It is. This is how I fight my battles. What we're doing tonight. This is how I fight my battles. No matter what you're going through, this is how. Just when you think you're lost. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. By him, are we not? It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I find my This is how I fight my battles. 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 Somebody shout for victory! Yeah, we give you worship this morning, Lord. We give you praise. Yeah, somebody lift up a shout of praise to the Lord. Yeah, we give you praise. Come on, somebody praise the Lord this morning. Brownsville, I know you could do better than that. Come on. Somebody give the Lord praise. There's joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. Somebody smile this morning. There is joy. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is joy. There is a river flowing, river of joy and laughter. We want to swim in the waters. We want to dance. 
There is a river flowing, river of joy and laughter. We want to swim in the waters. We want to dance. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. There is a river flowing, river of joy and laughter. We want to swim in the waters. We want to dance. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy in the house of the Lord. There is joy. this morning oh, yeah. oh freedom reigns in the house of the Lord you believe that this morning freedom reigns as we dance oh, freedom reigns in the house of the Lord freedom reigns as we dance church lift up a shout of victory in this house this morning hallelujah oh Jesus church could you do me a favor right where you're standing if you can lift your hands to the Lord Lord in this place we welcome you come on somebody we welcome you Holy Spirit in this place oh God I thank you that Lord by your blood there is victory come on somebody declare there is victory in this house today yes Lord we bless you, Jesus. Oh. Oh. We love you, Lord. The weapon may be formed, but it won't prosper. When the darkness falls, it won't prevail. Cause the God I serve knows only how to try it. Yeah. Oh my God, we'll never fail. Sing that out. Oh my God, we'll never fail. Oh, I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory for the battle. 
the Lord this morning. Oh, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. Oh, oh, oh I believe, Lord, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. Yeah, you turn it for good. Oh, you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Let's declare that today. Hey! You take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Yeah! You take the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good. You turn it for good. Church. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the Somebody praise the Lord this morning. Somebody bless the Lord. I'm going to see a victory. 
I'm gonna see victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Sing it out. I'm gonna see victory. I'm gonna see victory for the battle belongs to you, Lord. Come on, Browns, go praise the Lord this morning. Somebody praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody praise the name of the Lord this morning. Whoa. I search the world, but it couldn't fill me. A man's empty praise, treasures the faith. Are never enough. And you came along. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him. You put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Sing it out. Oh, there's no. Today, church, and I'm not afraid yeah. to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws. Lord, you've seen them all, but you still call me friend. Because the God of the mountain hey. is the God of Your mercy and grace won't find me again. Somebody praise the Lord in this place. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. Morning into dancing. Come on. You turn morning to dancing. shame into glory you're the only one who can you turn praise into God you turn praise into God you turn bones into armies you turn seas into highways hey. you're the Turn grace 
years into gardens, you turn bones into armies, you turn seas into highways, you're the only one who cares. Sing it again. You turn graves into gardens, you turn seas into armies. <laughs> Ten seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. You're the only one who can. Come on, somebody bless the Lord. Somebody give a shout of praise. Yeah. The Lord is changing some things this morning. Hey! Oh, hallelujah! Somebody shout for victory! Yeah. Morning to dancing. You turn morning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. Jesus church this is where I plan to end the worship set but the worship set is not over I feel the Holy Spirit's doing something this morning will you bear with me can we sing one more song this morning why don't you lift your hands to the Lord This morning.
that from where you're seated you're just I don't know what's wrong with you oh my 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 come on come on glory come on there's glory in this house there is glory in this house right now glory in this house My God is able to My save God is able. and deliver and heal yeah. and restore anything that he wants to do. Just ask the man who was thrown yeah. on the boat of Elisha if Come there's on. anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb. those dry bones will live there are things in your life that have fallen away that have dissipated have decreased and you feel it even died and God is raising it up today God is raising it up and calling for life and light into your world things that have crushed you are now coming back to life things that have defeated you God's now giving you victory 
We're believing God for that presence, that victory, that edification, that lifting up, coming out of the sand, out of the dirt. The Word of God says, unless a seed falls in the ground and dies, it shall not live. And we thank you, Lord, for the life that is ours right now. We receive it. We believe it. We proclaim it. We declare it. And we thank you, Father, for the victory that is ours today. The victory that is ours right now. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Can you shout amen? Come on, give a shout unto God. to turn to two or three people, smile big, wave big, and say, you look great for Sunday. Wow. Good call. <laughs> wow, that was powerful. Man, oh man, you may be seated. Wow. God is so good, is he not? Amen, amen. Well, it's good to see you in church. I like it. I like it a lot better than live stream. That's for sure. Those that are watching live stream, we're glad that you are. But it's also good to have you here this morning. And there's lots of good things happening. Uh, Carlos is away. He had an aunt and an uncle and a niece pass away, uh, all with coronavirus in Brazil. And so he's in Oklahoma with his family. And they're having a uh, memorial service there. And he'll be back tomorrow. Bring me down just a little bit, if you would, Greg. It's a little too loud for me. Um, just remember him in prayer. It's tough. And of course, there's a travel ban and family can't go and be there as well. And so uh, the cameras are up on nice platforms. Thank you, Gene, for doing that. That was good. I love that. Got him out of the aisles, got him up high. So that's nice and good to have. And uh, Paulette retired from teaching. How many years, Paulette? How many years? A lot. Okay, that's good. <laughs> But Paulette retired officially from teaching, and congratulations. And now she's trying to figure out what to do with the rest of her life. Now she's got that ready to roll, and it's good. Uh, again, just uh, the offering is going to be at the end of the service. There's boxes uh, at each of the exits uh, in the lobby, the seniors' entrance, and the uh, breezeway entrance here at the glass doors. And you can drop your offering there on your way out. No small groups uh, we're having right now, but we are. If you're a small group leader... We are having a Zoom conference on Wednesday uh, at 6 o'clock. We'll talk it through. We've worked out and talked about a lot of different things we can do to make it safe and a safe environment to have our ministry start up again. And we want to walk that through with you, and maybe you'll even have some more to add to that. And we're hoping middle of June somewhere, uh, second or third week of June, we're going to be able to get that going, and that's going to be good. Tuesday, um, thank you to everybody that's helping pick up groceries out in Milton at Feeding America. Uh, seniors, you can come and get your groceries at 5.30 on Tuesdays. And then Wednesday morning, uh, about 8, 8.30, we open the line for groceries for everybody else to come and get. And uh, that's on Wednesday. Wednesday night, still doing Wednesday in the Word and Q&A. And I uh, had a good, some good questions last week that we had a chance to share together and invite you to be part of that. I'm thinking when we start back up again, we'll do the live stream Wednesday night in the Word still, but do it from here. And if you want to come and be part of the Bible study here, you can do that. Uh, but we'll also have it still broadcast live stream this Friday is a worship night, and I'm excited about that. If you have just been waiting to soak in his presence and just get more of Jesus and being in the spirit, come this Friday. Uh, we'll still spread out and be social distancing, but seven o'clock on Friday, I encourage you to come and uh, be with us Friday evening at seven for worship night. And uh, we'll probably have a couple areas for flags and banners and worship dance and so on, and uh, be able to safe distance and still have that on Friday evening, Saturday morning, farm share and uh, excited about that. We've got groceries of Feeding America on Tuesday. We pick up seven grocery stores during the week and then farm share is coming on Saturday and we'll have between 35 and 40,000 pounds of groceries for farm share. Volunteers come at seven if you would and then we give out the groceries as soon as we're ready. People start lining up about 5, 4.30 in the morning and uh, we just want to get them cared for and head out as soon as possible. As I announced last week, uh, we are working on a bond modification for our debt. And those of you that are bond holders will be getting a letter uh, coming out the 1st of June, which is this next week. Hopefully it'll be out. 
and uh, it will have with it an amount in a check that you're going to get. Um, and we've got almost $900,000 in escrow that we're going to disperse. And so bondholders, you're going to get a disbursement of funds, which will be great. And uh, we'll get that going, get the modification going. And our first payment will start up in July. As I said last Sunday, when I came, our mortgage payment was 83000 a month. We got it down to 55, then we got it down to 35, then we got it down to 27. And with this modification, it'll be down to $19,000 a month. So that's good news. And it will get us in a place. And so uh, with everything happening and, and the way it looks right now, is we're going to be able to start that on the 1st of July and stay out of default. I don't think that's been the case since I've been here. We've been working at it so hard and you've been faithful in your stewardship and giving and want to give you a chance to be a part of that. And so, as I said, bondholders have a heads up for a letter in the next week or so that will uh, just explain all the details of it and the finances. Gold Star Trust Company is the trustee for the bonds. They're working with us. Uh, Share Financial, uh, they are working with us who helped sell the bonds and we're the broker. Uh, everybody's just been really good and patient and um, believing we have a real answer for that. Well, I want to I want to share a word this morning that I think is really significant and important for us as a church, for us as a community, for us as a city, and for us as believers. So let's just look to the Lord in prayer just for a moment. So, Father, I pray that you would open our hearts and open our minds and open our souls to hearing and seeing you. And I thank you, Father, for the spiritual vision you have for us. And I pray that that would happen today as we look into your word in Jesus' name. Amen. So the tragedy of the death of George Floyd in Minnesota, it's on everybody's heart, everybody's mind. And, and I have read dozens and dozens of pastors' postings about George Floyd. And I haven't posted anything about it. And I did it on purpose because when I read those postings, something bothered me. Now, understand me, it was wrong. It was racist. I agree with everything that they said online. There was nothing I didn't really disagree with. I opposed what happened and, and it was just appalling and it just illustrated what's going on in this nation and some issues that we need to talk about. But what I saw was, is we were pointing fingers at an, an expression of the problem. It wasn't, what happened was not the problem, it's an expression of the problem. And we need to look at what is the problem, but not just that, we need to look at what is the solution. And so I really prayed it through, and then I started Thursday praying about the word that God wanted and what I wanted to share this morning. And I kept coming back to this issue. We need to understand the problem, and we need to understand the solution. And so, first of all, what is the problem? The problem is a spiritual blindness. We aren't seeing how God sees. We are looking with physical eyes. We're looking with sinful eyes, actually. We're looking with eyes that don't see clearly or correctly. And that it manifests itself in a heinous murder and crime of an innocent person to be killed. I'm not sure what he was being arrested for, but did not deserve the treatment that he got in eight minutes of someone's knee on his neck and killing him. That is an expression and a symptom of the problem that we have. We aren't seeing clearly. It's spiritual blindness and it's spiritual ignorance. It's really what it is. And the enemy of this world blinds us. And humanity is blind to this. And unless we correct our vision, there won't be any answer. It's going to continue to perpetuate. Spiritual blindness comes out of our insecurities. It comes out of the fall of humanity. And the enemy capitalizes on it and exacerbates that whole issue. And so we need to see clearly and we need to see correctly. And, and if you go to uh, Genesis, we're going to look at a lot of different scriptures here for a few moments. But Genesis 3 and the, the issue in the Garden of Eden and the fall of humanity. In Genesis 3, 5, the serpent, Satan, goes to Eve and says this, For God knows that when you eat from it, this fruit, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. No, you won't, and no, they didn't. Because the enemy's a liar. The opposite was true. You won't know anything. Your eyes will be opened, but your vision's going to be distorted. It's going to be a twisted vision. It's going to be bad vision. If I take off my glasses, 
I see you out there, but I can't tell who you are. I've got to have my vision corrected so I can see clearly. And what we're doing is we're running around without spiritual glasses on and not being able to see clearly exactly how God wants us to see each other. We're missing the boat. We're missing the point. We have this twisted idea, and if I heard it once, I've heard it again and again. They disrespected me. How do you know? The way they looked at me. Get over it. Come on. Let's stop this and let's react and respond to it. I'm not leaving that server a tip because she treated me badly. Probably having a hard day. Double your tip. You know, let's, let's change some attitude. Let's change our vision. And let's look at people with hearts of compassion. You know, Jesus said the second greatest commandment was to love one another as you love yourself. But then later, Jesus raised the stakes even higher, and he set the bar higher, and he said, love one another as I have loved you. What does that mean? Get your eyesight corrected and see people as God sees them. Let's realize our anger, our loss of self-control, our misperceptions are only hurting everyone else, and especially yourself. When I arrived at this church, we were a white church in a black neighborhood. And I'm going, what's up with that? What are we doing? How are we reaching? If we're not reaching our community, we're not a healthy church. We need to work at that, and we've been working at that. Another example of not seeing clearly the children of Israel. We talked about that a few weeks ago. They leave Egypt. Moses leads them out of slavery, and they get to the Red Sea, and they're trapped. And Pharaoh's army is bearing down on them with chariots. And in Exodus 14, beginning at verse 10, it says, As Pharaoh approached the Israelites, looked up. So they looked. They used their eyes, and they saw. And what was the result? It says they were terrified. Why? Because they saw with their physical eyes an enemy. And then in verse 13, Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm and you will see the deliverance. So, you know, when you start to get your eyesight corrected, you can stand firm, and God will deliver you. All of a sudden, it becomes a domino effect. As you get your heart right, you get your eyes right. You get your eyes right, you get your perception right. You get your perception right, you can stand firm, and God will deliver you. We need to walk that journey. Jesus talks about it in the Good Samaritan parable in Luke 10. This man's beaten and robbed and left by the side of the road for dead. And it says a priest comes by in verse 31 of Luke chapter 10. And it says when he saw the man, he passed by. He saw. And his computing said, forget it. Let's go. And then it says a Levite passed by and saw him and passed him by. But in verse 33, the lowest of the lows comes along, a Samaritan, and it says when he saw him, he took pity or had compassion. You see, they all went by, they all looked, they all saw, but only one responded. So the question is, what do you see when you walk down the road of life? Do you see those hurting or do you see those that are a nuisance? I wonder what they did to get there. I wonder how they ended up that way. Well, you know what? That's tough and that's hard, but they're still hungry. Let's feed them in Jesus' name. You know, when we hand out groceries, we don't ask for credentials. We don't ask for their bank account balance. We don't ask for their social security number. We simply say, here is some groceries because we know you're hungry. Are there some people that abuse it? Absolutely. I say about 10% usually. But that other 90% are hurting and they're hungry and they're needing help. You know, Jesus, it's, it's, it's how, that vision that gets distorted, that vision that gets blocked. There's no better example than after the resurrection on Easter Sunday morning, and there's two disciples walking down the road of Emmaus, and Jesus shows up and starts walking beside them. And in Luke 24, verse 16, it says, they were kept from seeing him. So they had physical eyes, they saw a physical person, but they had no clue it was the Son of God. It was no clue that it was Jesus they were a disciple of, alive, walking right with them. Why? Because circumstances that had happened, the crucifixion, the execution of their rabbi, Jesus, blinded them from seeing reality. 
spiritual reality. And they missed it. And in verse 31, as Jesus breaks bread and they, he stays with them for a bit that evening, it says in verse 31 of Luke 24, then their eyes were opened. So you know what my prayer is to dealing with what's going on right now is, Lord, open our eyes. Let us see what's going on here. Let us check our heart and make sure we are in that right place and we're seeing others as you see them. Open our eyes. Luke, sorry, Ephesians 1 verse 18 is really the text of this whole message. It says, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. Ephesians 1.18, I pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened. And so that word enlightened is a very interesting word. It means to shine rays of light into it. It means to have brightness come. And you see those, I had, a, I had a controller once in the finance department, Don Smith was his name, in Peterborough, Ontario in Canada. And I remember him saying, because he was always negative, always negative, this is bad, this is terrible, this is awful, this is horrible. And I said, Don, the glass isn't always half empty. And he said, oh yes it is. And I'm not even sure about that half. And you know, when, I, when your eyes of your heart are enlightened and the presence of Christ is in your life, the glass is not only half full, the other half is on its way. He's bringing the light into it. All you have to do is open your heart and let him enlighten you. You know that Ford commercial, Ford has a better idea with the light bulb for the O and the light bulb is shining over your head. You know, let the light bulb shine on and let you get some light into it. Get rid of the darkness. Get rid of that skepticism. So about a month ago, I went for an eye, about three weeks ago, I went for an eye checkup. Hadn't been for six years. Guess what? My eyes were getting worse. And Deborah said it many times, you need to get your eyes checked. You need to get your eyes checked. Well, they called me a couple weeks ago and said, your new glasses are in. So when I got my eyes checked, they said, you got to pick out a frame for your glasses. And so I'm looking through. I'd had the same type of frames for almost 30 years, about four or five different times. So I'm looking for the same frames because I like them. Couldn't find them. So these are the frames I ended up with. Some like them, some don't. That's all right. And so I, they called me and said, come get your new glasses. So I go and I get my glasses. They said, you want to try them on? I go, yeah. And I put them on. I go, whoa. I could see. <laughs> you don't know what you're missing until you get your vision corrected and then you can see clearly. All of a sudden you realize, prior to that, you're kind of going, yeah, I'm okay. I'm all right. I'm fine. I didn't mean to trip over that piece of dust, but I'm fine. But then when all of a sudden you get your glasses on that God gives you and you see, you go, man, this whole world looks differently. Things start changing. When you put on new glasses, you see and recognize things. It's amazing what happens. So let me talk to you about what happens when you have spiritual eyes. When you have spiritual eyes, first of all, it corrects your vision. Things that were one way are now a different way. All of a sudden, you see things differently. I remember when I was in my peer group for my doctorate at United in Dayton, Dr. Roberson. And Howard Snyder, a revival theologist from Asbury Seminary, was on faculty at that time for doctoral students. And he challenged me and he said, as I wrote papers, he said, I don't think you're being honest with who you are and that renewal experience you went through. You need to share with us and I said, really? He said, yes, because some of those in this group need that same experience. You know, it's surprising when your vision is corrected what you see and what a difference it will make. It will help you see things better. You're looking at those that are in need instead of a derogatory way, but in a helpful way. Jesus never compromised the standard, but he always lifted people up. I remember one of the first sermons I preached and I was standing at the door and people were greeting the pastor as they go out and they all said, that was a good sermon, that was a good sermon, that was a good sermon, they all said. And this one lady came out and she said, that was a good sermon, it made me feel real bad. And I went home, I was just a young preacher, young pastor, and I thought, is that really what I want people to feel when they leave this place? 
I want when you leave this place to walk out of here going, I see things differently, and now I know I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want you to walk out of here with your head lifted high, knowing that Jesus Christ is resident in your life, and you are more than a conqueror. I want you to believe in that. Not because of who you are, but who you are in Christ. Secondly, you see things you didn't see before. When, when Deborah and I were first spirit-filled and I read through Scripture, there were verses jumping off the page that I'd never seen before. And I literally would say out loud in my prayer closet in the morning, God, when did you put that in here? It was new to me. All of a sudden, you ever had that before where all of a sudden God has opened the eyes of your soul and you look at something and go, I never saw that before. I never heard that before. I never understood. All of a sudden, the eyes of your soul take over. You see by faith, not by nature and physical eyes. When you have spiritual glasses, they give you direction. You know, it's kind of like flying down I-10, and you're looking for the exit, and you got bad eyesight, and you passed the exit before you even knew you were there. You got to put on those glasses to see the turns that are coming in life. When you have spiritual eyes, you can navigate life a lot better. It gives you a direction, a purpose, and you know how to navigate those curves and those curves that life throws at you, actually. Spiritual glasses, that's number three, gives you direction. Four, spiritual vision gives you new opportunities. New opportunities. You know, something will come along and there'll be something that'll hit your spirit and you go, hmm, I wonder if I should do that. I wonder if I should try that. I wonder what I should do. I wonder if that's some, you know, all of a sudden your spirit becomes more attuned to the voice of God. You now see him better and it gives you new opportunities. You see things that you never saw before. And all of a sudden you can make a difference. I remember arriving here 14 years ago and walking the property and seeing those two lots at W Street and X Street and Y Street and DeSoto and, and Gonzales. And as I was walking through and I was looking at this property, the Lord gave me a vision and I saw a senior center sitting on that property. I saw something that I hadn't seen before. It was a new opportunity. And I remember putting it down in a note and saying, I want to talk to the board about that next meeting. And so I did. And it was interesting. Someone on the board that had been here for quite a while said, well, I remember when we bought that property, the vision was a senior's residence. Nobody had told me. But yet when you have spiritual glasses on, you see new opportunities that you'd never seen before. Fifthly, you see the enemy and his plots. The enemy's not very smart. Now he'll continue to attack, he'll continue to come after you, but you're able to defeat the enemy because you see him before he comes. You know by the spiritual glasses you have when you stand firm or when you move forward, when you let God deal with it or you have to take a step of faith. It exposes the enemy. When you have spiritual glasses on, you're able to see the enemy's plots that he's coming against you and how it's gonna happen. And God will always be a step ahead. And you'll be right beside him because you're wearing the eyesight of God in your eyes. You've got his glasses on. And that's the whole verse that that song surrounded by Michael W. Smith we played at the beginning of the service is based on 2 Kings six seventeen, And Elisha and his servant are surrounded by the enemy and his servant is scared to death. And Elisha prays this in the 17th verse. It says, Elisha prayed, open his eyes, Lord, so that he may see. Then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he looked and saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around. You know, sometimes you think you're surrounded by the enemy, but all you have to do is say, you know what? Let me put on my spiritual glasses and see, oh yeah, there's chariots of fire all around me. I'm covered. I'm covered. I've got a protection here. I've got the presence of God with me. It's more than, you know, when you put on the shoes of peace or the gospel of peace, it's not that you're going to be at peace. It's that you're at peace when you're going through the battle. So you can be going through tough stuff. I've heard some real saints of the church, they go through some real trying times. And I, I, I think and I hear what they've gone through and I think, how have they made it? And their comment to me is quite often this. I don't know how I'm making it. I guess it's just the strength of the Lord. 
And you know what? That's exactly right because God will get you through it. It's amazing how that works. It's amazing how God helps. Number six, when you have spiritual glasses on, you see reality. You see truth. It's like I said, I take these off, I just see blurs out here. But then when I put them on, I see, oh yeah, there you are. And I can see who's here. Always, I've told you before, you know how you throw me off as you sit somewhere new. <laughs> I take attendance by where you're seated. But you move somewhere else, like David, you shouldn't be over there. You need to be over here. That's where you usually sit. Steve, you usually, Sam, you usually sit back over here, but now you're over here. So we, we do it by where we're seated. And Heather and Rick, you're supposed to be over here on this side, but we've got seniors over here, and you don't want to be a senior yet, so you're over here. But it helps you see reality. And then lastly, it helps you see the wonder and power of God. The power of God. Oh, amazing. And the power of God, it, it gives you hope. It gives you a, a, a sense of possibilities. A God full of his presence, where you focus not on evil, but you focus on godly miracles. Amazing miracles. So this Friday morning, I tuned in on Facebook and watched the memorial service for Ravi Zacharias. Ravi's impacted hundreds of thousands of people all over the world. And I'm watching the number in the top left corner of the screen. And it started out with 8,000 and 11 and then 20. And it ended up being 37,000 people around the world watching this service. Amazing man. Amazing man. One of the most brilliant men I've ever met. But I was thankful for encounters that God has put in my path. And I want you to think of encounters that God's given you that are godly divine appointments to help your spiritual vision. And Ravi was one of them. My dad was pastoring in Toronto in the late 60s. And a family immigrated to Canada from India, from Delhi, to the Toronto area, the Zacharias family. And the Zacharias family had five children, three sons, Ajit, Ramesh, and Ravi two daughters, and they sang, they actually had an album, and my dad had the Zacharias sisters sing in our church. Ramesh is a neurosurgeon, Ajit is a radiologist in Germany, and Ajit and his family stayed and were continued members of the church, but they needed groceries, I found out one night, and found out from Ravi that my dad delivered them when they were hungry on a Friday night. We went to their home, one, the Zacharias family, for dinner one night, and we took one mouthful of the curry Indian dinner, and we were on fire. I mean, just fire. They started laughing. I remember my dad saying, what's so funny? We toned it down for you. <laughs> that wasn't even as hot as they normally had it. I mean, it was fire. And then several years later, I'm a 16-year-old boy, and my dad's pastoring in the suburb of Detroit. And Ravi was 27, I was 16, he was 11 years older than me. And he was preaching to the troops in Vietnam. And he was coming back from that tour and flew into Detroit and stayed for a series of meetings at the church my dad pastored in Detroit. I gave up my bedroom and slept on the couch so he, Ravi could have our bedroom, my bedroom. And I remember him preaching one night where he said, give your all to Jesus, you'll never be sorry serve him with everything you've got. You'll never regret it. And then he said, I believe that there are some young people here that are wanting to serve the Lord and be called into ministry. And you need to come to this altar and respond to the call of God on your life. And I went to the altar and responded to the call of God. That night after that service, Ravi got a call from his brother in Toronto and said, your mom has just passed away. And he left and headed back to Toronto. Fast forward, I'm pastoring in Toronto now myself. And Ramesh is a member of the church and he and I met quite often, Ravi's brother. And so Ravi would come and preach at MGT where I pastor and would meet with him. We'd go to his annual meetings in Canada for Ravi Zacharias International Ministry. And it's a man whose life impacted me. And as I watched that memorial service on Friday, I thought two things. Lord, thank you for divine, godly encounters with men like Ravi Zacharias that have shaped my life. But then the second thing hit me, Lord, let me have spiritual glasses to help others and see others as you see them. 
Because there's one thing I heard through that service the whole time. Ravi always saw the better in somebody. He always saw the possibilities in someone. He always encouraged someone. He always lifted them up and believed in them. And I thought, that's what I want. I want my life to be an encouragement to somebody, not a taking away from. So let me come back to what I started with, the murder of George Floyd in Minnesota. That was a symptom of a greater problem. And that's that we don't see things right. We see things because of Genesis chapter 3. The fall of humanity. We don't see clearly. But I pray today in just a few moments as I pray for you that God would give you spiritual glasses so that you can see the world as God sees. That you can see individuals as Jesus sees. With love and compassion and care. Without prejudice. Without criticism. Without judgment. The enemy will do a fine job on his own of judging and criticizing and accusing everybody else. It's time for us. You say, well, I can't change America and it's racism. No, you can't. But you can make sure your heart's right. You can make sure your eyes are correct. We need to be careful. We need to open our eyes. We need to let the vision that God has for us to shine through, to enlighten the eyes of our heart. Would you pray with me? Father, I pray for spiritual eyesight. I pray that we would see others as you see them. That Jesus, you died and stayed on that cross and suffered for every one of us, regardless of race, nationality, color, I pray that the eyes of our heart would be opened and we would see one another with compassion, love and care, grace and mercy. We need that, Lord. We need it. And Father, we may say verbally and we may believe it that we are not prejudiced and we do not have racism in our body. That's fine. However, check us again. Check us again. Every time we take communion, we ask, Lord, to check our spirit. Check us on this issue this morning because we live in a city that needs unity. We live in a state that needs unity. We live in a nation that needs unity. Not division, not hatred, not segregation, but an embracing of one another. And I thank you for helping us with that. And now, Lord, I pray for those that are struggling with issues. There's battles going on right now. And they need spiritual eyesight to navigate those battles, to make the curve of life that's being thrown in their path. Let them find that direction from you right now. Let them see with the eyes of their soul. And I believe it and we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Open the eyes yeah. of my heart. So good. Lord. Open. Open, Open the, the eyes of my heart. heart. I, I want, want to see you. I want to see you. Let's stand and sing that first part again. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart, I want to see you, I want to see you. my heart I want to see you I want to see you Dr. Roberson would you come and join me
the message is from my heart. And it's a tough word for us because we need to hear it. But it's important. And I'm wondering if you'd be willing to pray for us as a church that again, the Lord would open the eyes of our heart. Let me just say before I pray that as a black man in America, I can fully appreciate the anger, the disgruntlement that's floating around in the country. And I pray now, God, that you open all of our eyes so that we can truly appreciate you. I pray for the family of the victims, not just George Floyd, but some of my own relatives that have died at the brutal hands of authoritative abuse. I pray for all of those that are hurting today. God, give them comfort. Touch their hearts, touch their minds, touch their vision. That they'll be able to see you in spite of the pain that they are experiencing. I pray for those that will bring upon us this terrible atrocity, that their eyes may be opened so they can truly see what you mean to the world, so that they can begin to live the way you would have us all to live. I pray God for the leadership of this country that it will stand and lift up your word and not their own agendas. That's right. Pray God that you would touch those that are on the battlefield, the front lines, that are dealing with the anger, that they don't let their anger be ignited mm. and strike back. God, we are going through a difficult time. We need the love of Jesus to surround us now. Yes, we do. We need the comfort of his word to know that it is well in our souls. We pray, God, for this country. We pray for the disrupted cities all across the country. Mm -hmm. We pray for our own city. We pray that you will continue to lift us up in the name of Jesus, mm -hmm. by the blood of Jesus, in his name. Amen. 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 We are dismissed. If you want to like prayer, I'm going to be right here and glad to pray with you. God bless you as you go. And we'll see you Friday for worship night and next Sunday for church. God bless you.